Hey there, Lick and Riffers! Welcome back to yet another awesome fingerstyle lesson here on Lick and Riff in which we're going to continue enhancing your thumb picking skills by adding bass solos to our chord progressions. So this is actually lesson number two in this little mini series revolving around adding bass solos to our finger picking. So the previous one, the first video, revolved around one chord. It was the very basics of this technique. Okay, so if you haven't watched that, this, uh, this video might be a little bit difficult for you. I'm not saying that you can't do it, I'm just saying that if it's a little bit difficult for you, then watch the first one and mm. learn the very basic technique and then come back here and re-watch this video and it'll be a lot easier. So in the first video, we, we, played, um, we played bass solos around an A chord. Okay, bass solos around an A chord. So now I want to take a simple chord progression and show you how you can add bass solos to that. So uh, the chord progression we're going to use is the, the very famous G, C, D progression, but like this. Okay? It's the take it easy chord progression, the time of your life chord progression. Okay, it's G with three and three on strings one and two. Same with C and same with D. So you have G, C add nine, and D sus four, okay? It's all with three and three on strings one and two. Okay, so G, C add nine, and D sus four. Now, the, um, the key here is important because there are actually two keys that this can be in. It can be in G, and it can also be in D. So that depends uh, on what sort of bass solo you want to do. Um, but we're going to start simple. We're going to start with G. So it's going to be 0, 2, and 3 on strings E, A, and D. Okay, now 3 on the D string gives us a blues. Okay, it gives us a bluesy sound. The natural note for this scale would be would be um, would be F sharp. It would be four on the D string. So if you want the natural scale, it's gonna be zero two three zero two three zero two four. So um, your little finger right now is on the first string. So if you want to use four, you're gonna need to change it. So I prefer to play zero, two, and three, so we have the same fingering. Okay, that's the reason why it's not the natural note. Okay, so the basic, basic idea here is to explore this. Okay, zero, two, three, and to G. Zero, two, three, and to C. Zero, two, three. And then D, okay, with the open D string. Okay, you can play the chord afterwards. And let it ring while you play the next solo. You can play zero to zero. Okay, so it's... Okay, um, that's the very basic approach. But I want us to do a lot more than that. I want us to do something like this. Okay, something like this. Uh, I wanted to be able to play around with this. So you can do 0 2, but on the higher string. You can do 0 2 on A. And then play G. You can do the same thing with C with 0, 2 on D. Okay, so. Okay. Now, the rhythm here doesn't really matter. You can play it in any rhythm you want. You see, the rhythm doesn't matter. It's the soloing that we're looking for, okay? That's our focus. 
Um, you can play it in any rhythm uh, pattern that you like. You can you can just be random about it. So let's say G. Now the, the the idea here is that you can play zero, two, and three anywhere you want, anywhere between these chords. Yeah, you can create any solo you want. The moment you get the zero, two, three thing down, you can jump between strings. You can play zero, two on D and then play three on the bass. You can do the same thing into C. can also play zero and two, uh, zero two on on the E bass and then play C okay but this is a little bit weird so that's why I, I advocate trying everything yourself because you need to discover what sounds good and what doesn't because if I just tell you do this and this and this and just copy what I'm playing you're not really getting the technique down okay so I want you to experiment with this. Try hammering on. Try pulling off. Okay, try playing notes twice. Pull off on A, two to zero, and then zero again, and then G. Okay, it, it gives you a little bit of a thumb slapping feel. Now, don't forget to play the chords, okay, on top. Don't forget to play the chord. That's really important. Don't get too immersed in the bass soloing that you forget to play the chord. Now, these notes should be ringing, okay? Okay, so just try different combinations. That's the idea. Now, if you want to play it in D, it becomes a little bit more complicated because you have four and two, okay? You have four, two, zero, okay? So if you want to play four, two, zero, you need to change your fingering. Um, so it's gonna be a little bit complicated. Okay, because two and three still lead you into G. You don't have four on the E string. You have uh, you have four and two on the D and uh, the D and A string. Okay, so so it creates a, a different atmosphere uh, and it wants a different uh, different kind of harmony. So I say try the, the, the easier one first and then when you want to explore D, okay, D major as, as a bonus exercise, then can if you want but it's a little bit abstract it's a little more abstract if you if you take 0 2 and 3 then you have G C and D and that's that's pretty concrete and and uh, pleasant for the beginner's ear It's a lot easier than it looks, really. Just try tinkering around with it and you'll see for yourself. Uh, it's, it's a lot easier than it looks. And uh, I'm, I'm playing this in a, in a highly exaggerated form, okay? If, if I were uh, backing uh, a singer or, some, or something like that, then I wouldn't be playing it like this. I would be playing it 
very subtly, okay, so like this. The idea is to find um, some sort of rhythmical concept that you feel comfortable with and just playing around with it. Because the moment you fit the notes into a rhythmical pattern, you can basically do anything. So have fun. I will see you in the next lesson. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and um, let me know how it goes. Bye for now. Thanks for watching.